Hi, welcome to another episode of Tube Tests. I just got back from Los Angeles, California, where I tested out a bunch of microphones, and we also checked out the C12 against the RK12 from Microphone Parts. So I'm actually gonna show you that video uh, of what we recorded, and I'm actually gonna do a little post uh, wrap up at the end too, tell you what was happening when the cameras weren't rolling. So here we go into the studio uh, with Dusk Bennett and check out the CK12 versus the RK12. Here we go, we got the Pape C12 warmed up and ready to go. We've also got the tube test mic that I use all the time for throwing capsules in. Um, it's got its CK12 version, actually the um, microphone parts version of a CK12 capsule. I believe it's called the RK12. And uh, this is original CK12. First we're gonna go on the C trick K12, uh, Pape C12, here we go. Down among the shelter in palms, oh honey, wait for me, honey, wait for me. Don't be forgetting we've got a day out where the sun goes down about eight. How my heart is yearning, yearning, yearning. How my love is burning, burning, burning to be down among the shelter in palms, oh honey, wait for me wow cool so now we're gonna go to the uh you know the tube tests and this is the rk12 um capsule that's in here so here we go down among the shelter and palms oh honey wait for me honey wait for me don't be forgetting we've got a day out where the sun goes down about eight how my heart is yearning 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 how my love is burning 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 to be down among the shelter in palms oh honey wait for me wow we just listened and we did a mic test on your Pape C12 mm -hmm. um, next to, you know, kind of like my tube test microphone, that my go-to microphone, I just kind of throw in capsules and I always test it out. Um, people are going to ask me what tube does it have in it. It's got the EF732 or known as also the 5840. Right out of the gate, before we do the playback, I am holding back my perspective, you know, from singing into it and seeing what I thought right out of the gate. But um, what was your perspective? They sounded close out of the gate, but first impressions don't always make the rule. So yeah. you have to listen when you're listening to the same microphone over and over and over again for hours and hours and hours, and you're working on it for days and days and months and months. You start noticing nuances or, or uh, characteristics that become really annoying or dissatisfying. Or nice, or nice yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. So um, at first I was like, wow, it's kind of scary that this mic that was built out of a bunch of tin can parts actually <laughs> sounds pretty good yeah. um, compared to my C12. And then uh, as we did some more recording, uh, I noticed that... Um, the C12 definitely has a better bottom end, mm, which is absolutely. usually an exception. Uh, that's not the case. C12s are not known for having a stellar bottom end. They're known for a really great top end. I think there might be something in, with this particular mic that I have that makes the bottom end more enunciated as opposed to the top end. Yeah, and I will say this. Right out of the gate as a singer going up to the microphone, I felt the same way. I mean, I almost feel like this is Siskel and Ebert. I'm like, you know, to be honest with you. Um, no, I really did. I, I went up to my microphone, which um, is a considerable difference. I mean, you know, one-tenth the price or, you know, one-fifth the price. But the, the reality of it is um, I went back and forth and I was like, immediately I said, wow, you know, these really have a similar sonic quality and that's what we were wondering is how close it is obviously it's a different tube um, obviously it's a different output transformer but what we're testing here 
for the most part, is how close is the capsule, you know, in similarities. And I kind of was blown away because they both sounded pretty close. But with that, I would 100% agree with you. Um, when I listen to my tube test mic that I always kind of throw up and throw the capsule in, um, right out of the gate, it, it sounded fantastic. I listened to the C, C, uh, C, uh, C12 um, with the CK12 capsule in it, and I was blown away. But they just very much sounded similar, but the CK12 and the uh, C12 had that more of that bottom end that you're talking about. Now, it could be, and obviously an interesting test that you know we're not going to go into is actually if we pulled the capsule and put it in your C12, how close would it sound? Yeah. And that would be a kind of a truer test. But um, I was pretty I was pretty blown away by it. But when you're talking um, the fine line between you know this microphone and that microphone, you are looking for those nuances, whether they're bad or good. And your C12 had it over. Um, my little tube test microphone that you're right. It's made out of like, you know, <laughs> tin cans. Random parts. Yeah, random parts and made from, um, you know, like uh, an ammo case for the power supply. Yeah. So we're going to listen back to it now and um, A, B it, and I think we're going to find uh, something similar. Down among the shelter and palms, oh, honey, wait for me. Honey, wait for me. Don't be forgetting we've got a day. Out where the sun goes down about eight. Okay. How my heart got, oh, is yearning, yearning, yearning. How my love is burning, burning, burning to... So, there is one file. Here's the other. Down among the shelter and palms. Oh, honey, wait for me. Honey, wait for me. Don't be forgetting we've got a day Out where the sun goes down about eight How my heart is yearning, yearning, yearning How my love burning, burning, burning to be down Among the shelter and palms, oh honey, wait for me Okay, so, so you got to say what uh, say what you're thinking and uh, say what you're hearing. I mean, it, we inter uh, interleaving the two files in and out, uh, interlacing. Sorry, going back and forth between them in um, solo mode. The C12 definitely is a better sounding microphone. Absolutely, uh, it's there's no contest. Uh, it, there's actually uh, the mid range tends to shift and sound almost. Um, I don't want to say honky, but it gets sort of confined and restricted. It almost as if um, there's a weird Q factor somewhere that is um, in the lower uh, mid-range, uh, somewhere in the 800 hertz to 1K zone. There seems to be this little rise, but it's not a gentle rise. It's more of a little, um, much narrower Q that it seems kind of honky and almost like constrictive. Uh, whereas the C12 doesn't demonstrate that. Yeah, and I, I think uh, what I heard is right out of the gate exactly what I heard with the headphones on, and I will stick to what I said earlier, is um, it has that bottom end that you're talking about too. Is mm -hmm. It was smoother. It had those nuances of you know an expensive you know vintage mic, but... With that said, going back and forth, man, I'm dying to stick that uh, RK12 capsule that's really only a $100 capsule in a, you know, C12 or a good sounding uh, vintage mic. Yeah, to see how it changes it up. But it's pretty, you know, we're, we're picking he hairs here. I mean, yeah. we really are. But, um, yeah, is it... You know, like listening to that microphone that's hundreds of dollars versus the thousands of dollars. Um, they're very close, but very different. Yeah. It, it, at the end of the day, if you're looking for a microphone for, you know, a reasonable amount of money and you can't afford to go out and buy some crazy vintage microphone, which is understandable, that's not a bad microphone. Really, it's not. It's going to be hard to work around some of the EQ issues I was talking mm -hmm. about, the weird sort of constricted honkiness, the, the cheap sort of capsule sound that I'm hearing from it. But I've heard microphones that will sell for twice what 
you have invested into that microphone that sound half as good. So that's a really good value for what it is. Yeah, and I would agree with that. I mean, I would basically say if you've got thousands of dollars and you can spend it on a C12, um, by all means, do it. Yeah. But if you have hundreds of dollars and you want to get really close, but you are going to miss some of the artifacts and the reason why that's, you know, thousands of dollars, she's get the RK12 capsule and put it in your uh, inexpensive microphone and it's going to come close for a lot of people. I mean, almost like, you know, too close for comfort. <laughs> but uh, if you're going to be picking hairs, then, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a bit of a difference. Yeah. My votes for the C12. Yeah, of well, of course, because you spent thousands of dollars. <laughs> My votes for the RK12 because I spent hundreds of dollars. But um, it'll be interesting to see what the uh, RK47, I think they call it, um, would sound like. Yeah. So thanks, and we'll see you next time on Tube Tests. So I just want to do a little wrap up. When the cameras weren't rolling, what Dusk uh, actually said a little further. Well, it wasn't so much what he said, it's what he did. He went out after hearing the C12 against the RK12, or the CK12 against the RK12, he went out and purchased a bunch of uh, RK12s. So anyways, the proof is in the pudding, and I just wanted to share that with you guys. Next time on Tube Test, we're going to talk about the M49 and the M249, one of my personal favorites, and I'm going to pull a microphone out of my collection and test it for you guys, and I think I'm actually going to end up having to sell it. You know, the wife came to me and said, Johnny, let's have kids. I can't disagree with her. Um, I'm ready to have kids, so I think I'm going to put that on the market. But I want to talk about the M49 and the M249 and how I recently got it serviced, and the AC701 was getting a little noisy, so we put a brand new AC701 in it, and I want to talk about, you know, what are the options? Can you put another tube in it? And so forth. So we're going to test that out, and I will see you guys next time on Tube Tests.